This time on pedal box, we're fitting some more sheet metal to the back of the car, this time on the inside as we fill out the inner arches. And I'll be honest, we are a little bit exhausted right now. It's taken us over a year, but finally we're going to start putting some of these new Patreon-funded exhaust pieces on the car. It's a good thing we didn't do it earlier, actually, because adding this third intercooler, one of the boost lines is going to go right through where we would originally have put the, uh, put the exhaust system. So I'm just going to map it out roughly in front of us here, how it's all going to go together now on the new design. So we're going to have a piece coming up off the turbo here, which is going to go onto probably a little piece of flexi. It's going to sit on the front. It's going to double back into our little mini catalytic converter, and that just runs across and down into the silencer. Now, what we're going to try and do through all of this, as much as we can, is keep as much of the exhaust as low and forward in the car as possible, because that's going to give us as much room as possible to put a heat shield over it to make sure that we're getting cool air into the intercooler. As much as this is very, very hot boost, this is stra straight out the turbo here, so it doesn't need very cold air to be useful. Obviously, the colder the better when you're trying to cool your boost down. So we're going to try and isolate as much of the exhaust heat as we can there. Sat in front of me here, pretending to be our engine, is the turbo that Aid's hoping to use on his VR6. So use your imaginations for now, because it doesn't quite have the right outlet adapter there. But our turbo flange is going to fit on there just like that. Just like that, he says. Onto that, we're going to put a little piece of flexi. Now, this is just there so that the exhaust system, which is pretty much like loosely connected to the body, isn't now rigidly connected to the engine. So the engine can sort of torque over. There's a little bit of room for flex in the whole thing. We've then got a pair of 90 degree bends. So we're going to cut a little bit off of these just to try and make the bends sort of, you know, to cut some of the straight section off to squash it all together. And we're going to cut some of that angle off there because the cat has to run slightly backwards along the car, a bit like that. And then at the very end, we go a 90 degree drop down. So that's going to be coming more sort of that way. And that's going to fit onto a little reducer neck into this bracket, which fits onto the intake throat of the silencer. Now, obviously, this isn't the real width of the whole system. I can't right fit it all quite in front of me like that. But where we have to extend it horizontally to reach across the car, we're going to take a bunch of sections out of this big old section of tube here. So we're going to build this all up in the back of the car now. We're going to do a little bit of modification to the back box to drop that, uh, to drop the connector that this fits onto. And then once we've got it tacked roughly in place, we're going to take it around a local specialist who can do stainless steel TIG welding to put it together for real. Now that we've taken off the inlet pipe into the silence, so there's got one more change that we need to make still. The two outlet pipes on the sides here are a little bit close to our big box receivers that we put on for our trailer hitches. Now, it kind of looks like it might be okay to get away with if we didn't have tips on, but considering it's on big rubber mounts and it can swing around a lot, they can still catch there as they wobble, and we're probably going to use some tips, even if not necessarily ones as big as these. So we definitely need to make more space in there. Plan for that's pretty simple, same as we did on, uh, on the inlet port when we cut and modified that before. We're just going to cut them off at the base, take some of the base off and just pull the whole pipe a bit closer into the box. Well, now we've made most of the individual mods that we have to make to our bits and pieces. The tailpipes are now narrowed in where they need to be. The neck here has been shortened, and we've also taken our little reducer piece and attached it straight on to our inlet flange into the silencer there. We've shortened down one of our 90s just to give it as low of a profile as possible. That sits onto the reducer there. Our two other 90s that make up the 180 out of our flexi on the back of the turbo here, we haven't actually shortened them. These are both still full size, and that's partly because the, the, uh, the sort of geometry and arrangement for it ends up really quite neat. So if I put that there, now this isn't the actual position it's going to be in, but you can see we've got a nice bit of space here between the cat and sort of all of the moving parts here. So we're not going to risk cooking the wastegate or anything with sort of bleed heat from the cat, because this is a lot closer than it would be in the real car. 
So that's going to be quite nice for us. And we're just going to put all of this kind of in this sort of line. So I put the cat there and I just lift this up some. That's pretty much the arrangement we're going to be at. Now, we probably don't even need to cut off any of our angle here because there's enough uh, flex, not in the flexi itself, but in the neck where it fits in. We've got a little bit of play in there. We can actually do this so we can actually pivot that 180 forward a little bit and it almost puts us exactly on the right alignment. So we're going to start tacking some of this stuff in place and just double check that we've, uh, that we've got that one right. It's high time we start work on our inner wheel latches here because sooner or later we're going to have so much external skin on here that we're not able to get in and make all the brackets and mounts and stuff that we need to hold these in place. Now in the last episode I was working on a bunch of wiring and while I did that Adrian was messing about forming these panels, making all the right cutouts and fitting in a few little test pieces to start closing in our inner arches. Now that might not look like it at the minute because it's sprung back to clean flat material but this piece here is a lower front wheel latch and that fits in just around the trailing arm here and sort of takes up this front area so we need to sort of bash that into shape a little bit and form that properly and we're going to rivet that in that's going to be a fixed piece that we leave in forever and this one we're going to bend around because that just springs out to the right shape and this is kind of the front sort of two thirds three quarters of our inner arch on there. Now it fits in just over this tube that we've got running around that's forming our little arch kind of uh, radius there. It fits in just on top of it. So we're gonna get in over the top, put a bunch of brackets in that we can basically fit this down onto, screw it in and hope for the best. Now, some time ago, on both rear wheel arches, we had a nice horizontal piece running from the chassis all the way out to support the side panels of the car. But we've sort of changed the plans a little bit since we've cut all of this off to give us this nice slashed rear end, a little bit GT40 style. So we've cut these off, but we're now going to repurpose them. We're going to put these in as uprights, and that's going to help support the inner arch plate that we're going to put in this gap here. So it's going to be another piece of sheet aluminium, much like what we've got on the front of the arch, just sort of formed in to fit in there. So this upright is just going to go here, give us a nice face that we can rivet onto. Now, since Chris welded in the upright, I can now put in the last panel. And I've spent about an hour or so shaping this and putting the various flanges on it to sit up against the inside and underside of the chassis. Unfortunately, the bottom corner is proving to be more difficult because I can't hold this in place well enough and get the fold at the same time exactly like it should be for the car. So I'm going to have to fix this onto the car, and then bend it into shape and hope that it is exactly the right size and then try and very carefully trim the edge off with the angle grinder in situ. The only thing left on the inner panels is adding some little rubber trim around the removable ones. That's just so that it's actually watertight. The other ones we've squeezed in pretty well, but we really want to make sure that there is no water going to get through this. And I don't think much will get through right now, to be fair, but I'd rather have a little bit extra along the side and maybe not chip the paint as much taking this one in and out. Well, it's been a hard few days working on the car in this heat. It is well over 30 degrees, and frankly, welding with that kind of heat is not fun. Nor yeah, it's is, real nice inside those gloves. Yeah, yeah, nor is anything really inside a big set of metal panels, because you just bake. It's literally like an oven. But we have managed to get the internal arches all done on both sides, which is superb. Yeah, and the exhaust's a big win as well, I think. That's something that we've been talking about for so, so long. Yeah. It's nice to finally have it done. Yeah, we've been promising it to everybody. Like, yeah, yeah, the, the patrons bought us an exhaust. Definitely, definitely, definitely. No, they actually have, and this is it. Although, we are thinking about making a little change to it in the near future. Yeah, as it turned out, the plumbing on it just kind of looks a little bit janky. I don't, think, I don't know if it comes up on any of the camera angles that, you've been, that you'll have seen it from. 
but when we look at it, it just seems kind of awkward. So yeah. we're probably going to throw an extra bend in there. And it just looks really, really weird. So I've ordered another 45 degree bend, and we'll get that in probably before the next episode, and we'll do a quick recap on the beginning of it. But that's it for now. If you'd like to support us by either buying some merch, t-shirts, hats, or anything to keep the sun off, or indeed the rain off, because <laughs> the English summer is probably going to end soon, check out shop.pedalbox.show, and you can buy any of those things, including stickers and more. You can also support us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show. There's three tiers there from as little as a dollar a month. The five and ten dollar tiers get access to our Discord server where we sort of post sneak peeks of how we're doing on the car. We talk yeah. about each other's projects and stuff. I'll be honest, there's not so much of the talking about each other's projects at <laughs> the minute because no one's working on anything in this heat. Yeah. But uh, hopefully we'll get back to that in the, uh, in the future. Yep. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. We do communicate with everybody that leaves a comment where we can. We've had a little bit of back and forth with people about the air dam and the, and the ducting that we've got for the radiator at the front, but unfortunately we're kind of committed at this point. But it's good for future reference to know that forward would be a little bit better than where we have it. But it is what it is, so help us feed the algorithm, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell, and we'll see you next time.